I'll be speaking to Mark Nelson, an extraordinary artist and school teacher who lives near Chicago. One of Mark's interests is in depicting the victims of war and persecution. Views, viewers of this program know that he was one of the featured artists at the Gandhi Peace Award last December with his artwork about Syria. He was also kind enough to do a work of art in tribute to the late Mubarak Soleimani. We're gonna be talking about the case of Mazen al-Hamada, a Syrian who was part of the freedom movement who was arrested, tortured and freed, and then who told about what happened to him and others, and then mysteriously went back to Syria. The man who Mark met and whose image Mark has drawn many times. Good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon. Thank you, Stanley. I appreciate talking to you. So how did you first hear about this man? Well, I was um, starting to draw seriously about um, Syria in 2016, and I'm really ashamed it took so long for me to start making art, but I just, it was one of those intrinsic things that I just started to do drawings. And through that, I met, um, through the internet met some survivors of um, Assad's prisons, which I hadn't heard such atrocities and such horrendous things happening to humans um, um, since maybe Bosnia in those, they had some camps um, there and, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So I started to kind of talk to as many people as I could. And then I ended up finding in spring of 2017, um, there was a film called Syria's Disappeared, uh, the, the case against Assad. It was, it was um, made by an amazing British filmmaker named Sara As, As, Asar Shar. I better pronounce her name, last name wrong. Uh, and the film was about the experiences of these survivors of horrendous things and about the prison system, about the over 100,000 people that have been disappeared in Syria. One of the, um, one of the um, survivors of the torture they interviewed was Mazen. And I remember sitting, I was sitting on my couch and I was watching this film on my, on my little computer. And I, I, first I saw his face and he has this um, very emotional um, face, very thin, um, very long fingers, very expressive hands. And he started telling details I won't, you know, repeat here, but her, um, just some of the worst things I've ever heard. And his eyes filled. And um, at one point, Sarah uh, was interviewing him and said, what, what do you want people to know? What do you want people to know? And he said, he said, I will not rest until this madman, this war criminals brought to justice and his eyes. I mean, it was just so after I saw that, I mean, I, that image just burns into you. And I started um, his face, everything about him. So I started drawing and drawing him and drawing him. And I uh, got in contact with the filmmaker and said, I really, really would like to um, meet this man and maybe have his permission to do more drawings of him because he, there's something about him. He, he, he's such a brave such a brave guy. He's, you know, very outspoken and, and very just honest in this brutal way. So then I finally got in contact with Mazen and through translators and stuff, we started a kind of a friendship and um, I would draw and I would, I would listen to some of his um, stories um, through some bad Google translate. And eventually um, the U S Holocaust museum sponsored Mazen and, and Sara to come from Europe um, he was living in uh, the Netherlands and they came to Chicago. So um, the Northwestern, I think, law school posted them. So I actually got to physically meet, um, meet him. And it was, um, we had, you know how it is when you know someone online for so long, but you've never physically met them. He came mm -hmm. out of the door and we saw each other and, and just like we'd known each other for years, even though I'd only known All right, let's for go. Months. Oh, we have a couple of pictures. Okay, that, okay. That you had somebody. Yeah. Else. So we are going to screen share here. So um, it was a screening of Maz of the film Sara had made, and Mazen was there. And um, it was an amazing event because, you know, you watch this harrowing film, and then you see one of the um, chief people in the film, you see them, you see them sitting in front of you, 
and here and then and then uh, we got to ask questions and but probably the the moment that will stick with me um hopefully to be repeated at some point in the future um was um seeing Maz and he came out um through the the door and he saw me and he yelled my name and he came up to me like he was my brother there it is so i got to meet him and then i also had done a drawing of him and um got to give that to him and it was at this event so um it was at this event that i saw one of the driving forces behind mazen it, it was um a combination of an, it was, it was an urgency. It was a combination of an urgency to tell a story because he knew people were, as he's there, people are suffering. While he was at the Chicago event, his family members in Deir Azor, which is in the east part of Syria, right near Iraq, um, that's where he's from, they were in danger while he was at the Chicago event. There was things going on, you know, the, the, the regime forces were attacking. So he would, I'd be talking with him through a translator and then he'd put his hand up for a second. He'd go in the corner and just, just weep. And he'd be checking his phone and then he'd come back and we'd talk and then he'd go and he'd weep. I mean, it was just, you could see, you could see um, everything he was draining out of him, but there was a sense of urgency because he said to me, he said, you know, I can't rest until people, the detainees are freed because you know, they're there now. They're there as we're talking. So that was one of the things I, I got about him is that there was this uh, almost um, frenetic, almost way energy of this mission, this, this, this um, duty to, to tell his story, to share everything, which hurt him a lot. You could tell when he would tell a story, he would be reliving, reliving it every time. Every interview you can see with Mazen when he retells what happened to him, it's like, it's it's fresh. So you know- He, how he got out of, out of prison 2014, this is yeah. 2017, and he's been touring Europe and America. Yeah, he went everywhere. They went to Italy, he went to America. He went, this is the pain behind this whole thing we'll maybe get in later about maybe the, um, why he returned to Syria. He was trying to show everyone with the intention of saying, this is happening. Let's do something. We need to stop this. I am sharing with you everything I am, everything I've experienced. But there was a lot of you know, sympathy. There was a lot of compassion. There was a lot of people saying, I'm so sorry. But there wasn't things that were happening. Um, he told me that in 2014 was his biggest hope. He had just gotten released. He had gotten out of prison. Uh, and he had uh, gotten to Europe. And the Caesar photo photos had been reveal to the world. And he thought, this is it. This is it. The world is going to, you know, once these photos are out, there's no way. Right, right. For our viewers, yeah. what are the Caesar photos? The Caesar photos are um, photos taken by a medical, um, a Syrian regime, um, like a medical photographer who was sickened by what he was seeing his, um, the regime doing and secretly taking, um, he was taking photos as part of his job but he was also saving them to a thumb drive. And he, he um, I forget the exact number of photos, but he smuggled thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of documented evidence of what the regime was doing to um, civilians. So that was a huge thing. And so Mazen thought with that, those photos, his testimony, yeah. this, was gonna... this is it, this is it. This is the watershed moment, you know? And, and when that, and that was back in 2014. So he was still, I mean, that was three years later when I met him and he was still just that sense of, I need to do something. I can't rest. I cannot rest until this, this um, leader and his um, henchmen are brought to justice. I mean. And did you communicate with him after 2017 oh up until up until almost he left oh up until almost he went back um yes and so what year, what year was that that was uh was it last year yeah it was about a year is a little over a year ago so it's been like 400 um 400 and i the exact dates i'm not but for over 400 days since he's been mm -hmm. gone since he's did you have any idea he was thinking about going back Here's what I knew. I knew that he was in a desperate situation. Um, he obviously was dealing with trauma, psychological trauma, huge amounts. He was um, 
his health, his health was ruined by this experience. Um, his bones were broken. He broke his ribs, his wrist, his, his legs, his um, hands, everything broken. Um, and he had also had a horrible experience with the government in, um, in the Netherlands where he had received back pay from, he worked at an oil company before the, the uprising 2011 um, or the revolution. And he, uh, requested they said hey we got this back pay for you well you know this is when he's living in the netherlands and he said yeah please send it and so once he got that then the government netherlands said hey that 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 uh disqualifies you from getting refugee benefits mm -hmm. so basically he lost everything he ended up living with um i think his nephew uh his fam so he he at that point had lost everything um and the last thing i had heard from him is that he was going to lose his apartment, he was gonna lose uh, everything he had, basically. So on top of everything else he was dealing with, he was losing that. And as it, as he was leading leading up to this, you could feel a you could feel a rising um, anger almost, and and just uh, desperation, and 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 just saying, listen, I I'm, I'm still trying to get this stuff. I'm still trying to fight for justice, and and it's the wheels are you know, the machine is grinding down, the apathy is setting in. Um, people are starting to be like, and I told you this before, but people would say to him, gosh, you're still on about that whole thing? Yeah. You're still on about that, huh? You know, it's been years. It's been, you, you, you've you been out of prison for the, I mean, to me, that's just like the biggest punch in the face for anyone who suffered trauma before. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Aren't you over it yet? I mean, how insane do you have to be to ask someone that? So th when so, did you hear he had gone back to Syria? Oh, so... I'm trying to remember the exact or, date. Or how did uh, how, how did, did I hear? So I heard from um, the uh, a group called the uh, Syrian Emergency Task Force They're out of uh, DC. Um, they were a group that I wor worked with before, and someone um, from that group messaged me and said, "Did you hear about Mazen?" And I thought, "No." And then that's why I, that's how I found out is that she said he went back to Syria and he's gone. We don't know where he is. Um, so one of the things, um, and I don't know if you want me to get into this or not, but one, one of the um, things that I, that there's a lot of theories about why he went back. You know, there's even, there's even been um, Syrians that I've talked to that said, well, he's, I'm not ta talking about him anymore because he went back, you know? Um, one of the things, his main goal, his, one of the biggest goals was to help the other detainees um, help his family I think he felt like he was drowning in entropy where he was, you know, he had just lost everything. Um, he might have thought that with his, with his, um, you know, people knew who he was and all that, that he, there's ideas that he could maybe go back and help get other detainees out. Maybe even there's some people had said that they, the government was making a deal that if he came back, they would release detainees. His main goal was to, to, to get them out. And so I think and there was- we don't know because no one's heard from him since. No, no one's no. The last, um, the last thing we heard from him was he, um, after being begged not to board the plane from um, Beirut to Damascus, the last thing we heard was his nephew had called him. He had just landed in Damascus. His teeth, his teeth were chattering. His nephew said his teeth were chattering with fear and said, I think basically I, I need, I need to get out of here. I made a mistake. Mm. And, and that's, and they could, and his nephew said he could hear someone talking like right near him, like almost like telling him what to say or who, who knows. And that's it. Yeah. Wow. That's it. So you so, had done a lot of drawings already and then yeah. you started some from his Instagram. Yeah. So when he disappeared, when he disappeared, I was terrified, um, beyond just knowing that he went back and is, was gone as far we didn't know anything about him. I was terrified that he'd be basically erased, like, like his um, social media accounts. I know some, some of his things had been taken down and I thought, oh my gosh, his, uh, his image, his, his everything. So I went to his Instagram page quickly and basically did screenshots of all his photos because um, we all know how quickly things are, are glossed over or forgotten are you know pushed aside <clears throat> and i might my nightmare is that within a, a year or two he would just be like oh 
that's it, you know, he's gone. So I wanted to screenshot and my, I wanted to myself when I draw, I kind of re-engage with whatever subject I'm looking at. I wanted to see him and I wanted to re-engage with his face and his, what he was doing. And so that my goal was to draw as many of his Instagram photos as I could draw. So, so let's that's go and take a look at some of them. All right, so we'll go okay. to screen share and uh, share. Okay, so I think the audience um, can see these now. And uh, I'm gonna open this one. And I hope it'll fill the screen. So um, this is the picture of Maz and, and behind uh, him, this is right when he just, this is pretty much when he disappeared. Uh, uh, it was just a nightmare. Um, to imagine him being gone uh, back there, and so I drew, I draw in hundreds and hundreds of images of, from this from the Caesar photos. So this image popped in my head. It's not a good image, but it's basically Mazen, his face, which is you know filled with emotion as always, and then behind um, are images from the Caesar photos. So I'd done those um, drawings and had had a him on top. I did the drawing separately and then put them together on my iPad so that they would be one image. Um, Cause that's the image I saw in my mind, which is not a, not a pretty one, but art isn't. <laughs> Sometimes things come to the, your mind, you just have to get them put there. Sure, let's go to the next one. Okay, um, so the next one is the first drawing. I decided I'm gonna draw as many Instagram, many of these photos as possible with the idea that I would draw them and share them. Why? To keep Mazen in people's mind, to keep him um, not alive, but to keep him basically like, we're not, we're not gonna forget about this guy. We're not gonna forget about our friend, our, our brother, you know? So um, I would, I would I, the first one I drew is the one you're looking at, I think, um, where he's just kind of sitting there. I just had some charcoal on my pad and I just drew a quick image and I thought, this is it. I wanna, I wanna draw as many of these as I can. So that's what I started doing. So the images that people are seeing are images from his Instagram account. Um, he took, to the, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Um, are you going to the next one, the film? Yeah, one? if you're, if it, you know. Yeah, 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 great. So this is, this is Mazen from a film where he was telling his story. Um, it's a film I worked on where I did the artwork for the film um, and, and it's called uh, The Truth Seekers. Um, I think you can see it on YouTube um, called the Truth Seekers. It's about the um, Caesar. The, that's a code name for the the man who smuggled these photos. And Mazen, of course, as one of the um, most outspoken advocates for the detainees, uh, was in this. And this is a drawing I did of him as he's talking about. I think at this point he's saying, "I'm a human being. Like I have hopes. I have dreams. How can how could they treat me like this?" Basically. And you did that for the Canadian broadcast. Yeah, program. yeah. Okay. So this is this is now mo most of it's an interesting when you look at someone's social media account, you see their life. I mean, or what they want you to see, or you know. But one of the the Mazen's social media account, his Instagram account, is made up of two types of images. Um, one is him at um, at a demonstration or preparing for a demonstration. He was tireless. He would do as many as he could. The other images are, are of him with family, friends, sometimes just himself, um, selfies, I guess. So this one is of him um, with uh, protesting in, a, in the cold. And uh, on there, you see Derazor, which is his hometown, home, home province, um, which was always in his heart. And I think one of the motivators about him returning, because there was thoughts that they would release prisoners from Derazor um, if he returned. Not sure if that's true or not. It's just one of those things you hear. Here's another one of Mazen preparing for a demonstration. Um, he would, uh, yeah, he would go to as many as possible and be out there for hours and hours and hours and hours. He, uh, even though his health was very poor, he would um, push himself to the limit. And how so, old was he? Around? He was, I think, in the, he's in, in his 40s. Um, so couple of years older than me, I think. So maybe he's 44 or so, mm. 45, um, not too old. The, the torture, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see photos of him on his Instagram from before the uh, 
the uh, 2011 um, uh -huh. event started and, and it looks very different, very different. Um, this says uh, in French, thanks to my wife who speaks French, she translated for me, Syrians are not beggars. Um, and this is just the idea that obviously anyone who knows anything about Syria knows it's one of the countries with the richest histories in the world. And, and just saying we are, you know, we deserve, we're not begging. We're this is something that we demand is our right <laughs> as human beings, you know. Um, this is, so Mazen traveled all over to speak to people and, and it, um, he went to France several times um, and he was um, part of a book. Uh, can you see, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but this is the book he's part of, it's called Operation um, Caesar. It's by, I might be butchering her name, but Garance Le. Le. Let me stop share, then, then we can see okay. the book. Okay. This is the book he's part right, of. Just I, hold it steady. All right, we got it now. This is the book about basically telling that here's the, the author's name, Grant Lay, something. Uh, she's, um, she put together a book of, of how the photos were taken out of Syria. Mm -hmm. It has, but it also has interviews from, from prisoners or detainees, and he was one of them. There was maybe some talk about doing a more full project with Mazen, but obviously circumstances led to um, he's gone. So you know, because he, he by himself could fill a tome with um, experiences and sure. things like that. Let me go back to uh, screen share. All right, we were looking at him in front of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And then the next one. Just, yeah, and these are quick sketches. These are a couple hours. Um, they're, um, they're done with, um, a lot of them are done with opaque watercolor called gouache which is um, a really uh, fast medium to use. It's like watercolor, but it's a kind of, you can layer and layer. And um, so this is a picture of Mazen outside another protest. This is after some of the chemical attacks in Syria where the Assad regime with the help of Russia um, was basically dropping chemical weapons and murdering um, civilians. So he was, um, I really liked his look in this drawing because this is, you know, this is Mazen. He's he's determined. He's not going to let this go. He was right. so brave. He is so brave. I'm going to talk about the present tense. Um, yeah, just this is Mazen. He would take he would take um, selfies, but his face. I mean, his selfies um, just showed so much of him. His face is so expressive, and um, I just I just um, I want to be as familiar with his face as I can. Just. To, to draw it as much as possible. Let people see it as much as possible. I'm gonna stop the share. Yeah. And, uh, and so no one's heard from him. No one's heard from him. There's been rumors, there's been painful rumors um, that have been unsubstantiated. And you know, anytime someone has a rumor that's painful, it hurts his family. You know, I mean, things spread like wildfire on the internet. Mm -hmm. And um there, but no substantiated um, think any words from him. So it's very, very, very um, horrendous. And just another another um, reminder that this is a, this is still happening now. As we're speaking, detainees are still being tortured um, right now. So that that is what he was trying to show everyone. And, and now, um, so that to know and to know about what he went through and to think that he is back maybe in this situation is a, it's a nightmare. So I just, I don't want, um, and you know, as a person who's worked a lot with social justice and things, it's, it, it, the world has a kind of short attention span, right? And, and people move, they move on, so to speak. And it, the family members and people who've suffered through the things don't move on. This is not a moving on type thing. This is always, always there. Always well, there. Let's, let's end. You, you made a hashtag or two. Why don't we Mention, oh yeah. Um, what, what, what um that the hashtag is um the one I use is where is Mazen? All right, no, I'll an, superimpose that. Thank up. you. Yeah, where is Mazen? Basically, where is he? And so I try to send um when I do these posts on social media, I try to tag um government agencies. Um lately I've been tagging the, the World Health Organization because Syria, they've given Syria kind of a prominent role in that. And that's staggering. Yeah, they're, to, they're, they're the head of the World Health Organization. Yeah, to me, that is just 
okay, well, this is this is the people that you this is the government that you're saying in some well, they gave the Saudis the head of the Human Rights Commission. That I mean, there's there's things that you think Orwell would could would think no nah, no one's going to believe that if he wrote that down but yeah. so 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 but trying to send it to people not that anyone sees it that are from these places but what are you going to you can't do nothing right yeah all right i really appreciate uh thank you your talk and your amazing artistic work and your thank you thank you sir all that. well it's great to talk to you i really appreciate it and thank you for what you do as well all right bye-bye